In this series of videos, we're going to be discussing the Solid Edge 2D drafting software. <clears throat> this software comes standard on your table and it is an excellent 2D drafting software. So, first off, we're going to start this first video is going to address just setting up your environment um, for drawing. So, when you open up Solid Edge, you're going to see this window. The first thing you want to do is click on Create 2D Drawing. So next, you're going to want to set up your view. For the most part, I don't like drawing in this um, paper view here. So my first step is to go over to View, and then I'm going to click on 2D Model, right? And then I'm going to unclick the working. And so that just pulls up a plain grid without the paper. I find it a little bit easier. Uh, your next step is going to be to set up your units. Now by default, um, Solid Edge opens up in metric units. To change that over, you're going to go to your application button, and then you're going to go down to file properties. And then you're going to go up to units. And then you can change your units from millimeters to inches. And click OK. Now the last step is to set up your grid. I like to have this grid set up just the way I want it. I find it really helpful in uh, positioning and uh, helping me determine the scale of what I'm drawing. So we're going to click on this little grid option here. If you click on the arrow next to it, it shows you additional options. So we're going to click on grid options. And then we're going to pull up. You're going to make sure you have show grid selected, snap to grid selected. And then for grid, you're going to show it as lines. And for snap to grid, you're going to set it to points. Now, what we're setting here is the snaps, which I'll be talking to, basically magnetically pull the points and lines to certain spots on the screen that help with alignment. By setting it to points, it will automatically latch onto the center of these squares rather than the lines themselves. I find it more useful. Next, you're going to set up your major line spacing. I like to set this to uh, 12 inches, and then I will set my minor spaces per major to 12. So I'm going to click OK. And now I have a 12 by 12 square with smaller squares indicating one inch increments. So. So now that we have the, uh, the drawing space set up, we're going to start talking about a little bit about some of the drawing tools up here. The nice thing about Solid Edge, it pretty much has all your tools on this main home page. You have a few more on the tools page, and you can actually move things from this tools page to the home page, which I actually have. I've moved some of my boxes from that tools page over to here. Um, First, we're going to start talking about your tools, your drawing tools. These are your main ones. So again, if you if you click on the arrow next to it, it will show more options. So that's going to be important for you to figure out and learn roughly what each one of these tools does. And we're going to be going very briefly over what each of these tools do. So for starters, we're going to start with the line tool. Line tool is very simple. If you click anywhere, on your grid, it will snap to that corner. And as you can see, it's snapping to the intersections of my grid. If I click again, it finishes the line. And then I keep moving, it will want to continue the line however I, wherever I want to go. Now, if I right click, it'll stop drawing. And so I have one line drawn. So if I want to go and draw another line, I can click on an intersection, click to end it, click to end it, and click to end it. And so when I'm done drawing, I just right click with my mouse. Now, one of the things you notice here is when I get on parts of these lines, these symbols show up. Now these are snap symbols. These snap symbols are shown up here. 
usually I like to have all of these boxes checked. But what the snaps do is it a, it's a key feature of any CAD system. It allows you to properly join lines in the exact spots. So for instance, if I move to this corner, you'll see um, that little snap indicator showing that I'm going to snap to the end of this line. If I move down a little bit further, this indicator is showing me that I'm going to snap on to this line. Not necessarily, it could be anywhere, okay, but it's going to actually snap to the line. Um, if I move down further, you see it changes to I'm going to snap to the middle of the line, okay. Um, these snaps are really important because without them, there's no way that you'd be able to know if your line was exactly connected to this line or not. No matter how far you zoomed in, you would end up with what is called an open line. The lines would not be connected. That's going to be a big problem, particularly for sheet cam, because it's just not going to cut the lines the way you want them unless everything is connected properly. So you're going to want to be real familiar with all of these snaps and how to use them. So if you click on them, you, you can see it gives you a description of each one and what each one is indicating. So, <clears throat> but again, moving on. So let's say I want to go to the middle of this line right here. I snap here and now I'm on the middle of that line. This is, a, now it's showing me I'm perpendicular. If I go over here, it's showing me I am parallel to this other line up here, to this line right here. If I move up, now I'm parallel. Um, so, and, and then again, if I, if I go vertical, it shows me that I am vertical. So, so you can snap your line wherever you want. I can snap to the end over here, but say I want to snap to the middle, that would be right there. And then again, I right click to end drawing. Now, there are additional uh, tools in the line box. We're going to talk about these. So curve, basically, if I click, I can start a line. And then I click again. And now I can actually bend a curve wherever I want. And this curve will uh, will allow me to flex and manipulate. This is a really nice feature. That basically allows you to join the lines up. Now one thing about a curve, if I go over here and use the select and select that, now it shows me these uh, handles um, that allow me, if I click on them, I can manipulate my curve, okay? Depending on where I click, it will manipulate the curve. It, it gives you a really nice fluid way to make adjustments in a CAD system by doing this. Now, <clears throat> so that's basics of the curve tool. I want to talk about the select for just a second we just used. So if I hit select, all right, and then go over here. And again, when you're using a tool, you can see you have these options here that allow you to help you modify the tool. So for whatever I click on, I have these other options that will give me the size of it or my line widths. Um, so for instance, if I hit the select button, I have options here for uh, selecting different layers. But one thing I want to mention is this here, inside, outside, overlapping. So if I, let's say, by default you'll see inside. So if I draw a box, anything inside that box will be selected. If I, I can right click to deselect it. If I draw a box that doesn't fully enclose it, it won't be selected. Now if I go down to outside, anything that is outside the box will be selected. Again, right click to deselect it. And if I use the inside and overlapping, anything that the box touches will be selected. So those two lines it touched 
so therefore they were selected. Um, so again, uh, that's a, a really nice feature and uh, good to understand how to use it. It'll really help you, especially if you get a complicated drawing and you start trying to select different pieces of it. So I'll switch it back to the default, which is inside. You also have this select all feature. You can click on that. It will select everything on the screen. So moving on back to the line feature. If I go down to point, this will allow me to put a point on a particular area. Now, um, sometimes the points can be a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to zoom in. So if I click right here, I'm going to have to increase the size of my point for you to be able to see it. It's just too small. So I'm going to go to 1.4 millimeters. Now you can see the point, even though it is very small. Now, when you change this uh, line width, you're going to be changing your line width for everything else you draw. Um, your lines will still be lines, and so that, that width won't come up in uh, sheet cam, but it may make it a little bit harder to see. As you can see, that width is a little bit bigger, but if I go back and I try to draw a line, you'll see that my line is thicker now. So. Um, so points are important. You can set points at particular areas and then later allow you to snap to those points, basically. And your last thing here is free sketch. So interesting about this free sketch, if I click on with the mouse and draw a line solid edge will then try to replicate that line by then um, basically making shapes that fit roughly to that that path I drew okay so and you have a bunch of different options for free sketching free sketching circle or free sketching a rectangle As you can see, um, you have to be, you have to make sure you get pretty much right back to it, otherwise it won't do it. But a um, lot of different options here. Um, you're really just going to have to play with it. Um, for the most part, in most 2D drawing, you're not going to be doing this, but this again gives you more abilities to be artistic in your designs using um, sheet cam, or I'm sorry, using uh, solid edge. And again, if you select this, these different parts, and it's a curve, it has the ability to be manipulated with these handles. So, and so that's basically um, using the lines. Uh, you're going to want to go through and learn each one. Um, so that you can become real familiar with it. Now we're going to move on to our rectangle um, drawing features. As you can click on this arrow and you're going to have a number of different ways to draw rectangles. Usually I'm using this rectangle by two points and so what happens here if I click I can draw and drag a rectangle. Now as you can see, if I look up here, I'm going to point up here, this is going to indicate the width and the length of the rectangle you're drawing. So say you want to make a rectangle that's um, 5.58 inches by um, 5.78 inches tall. So now you have your rectangle sized exactly to what you needed. Um, so entering up, entering your dimensions here is going to be an important option for you, okay? To be able to get all your your lines and whatnot drawn exactly to the, to the correct size. So 
moving on, you have a couple of different options. You have rectangle by three points or a rectangle by center. Like if you click on rectangle by center, then you have the ability to center a rectangle on a point. Okay. Um, so again, right click ends it. Um, one of a, a, a nice little option I'll do a lot of times is um, say, for instance, I need a, uh, on this, this uh, piece right here, I need points for uh, a, a bolt hole a certain amount down and a certain amount in from each corner. Um, an easy way to do this is to use your rectangle by two points, click out your corner and decide, okay, my bolt hole needs to be um, in from the side, uh, let's see, 0 0.23 inches and it needs to be down, say, um, point uh, five inches, half inch. So then you can set your box there. And now I have a little box and I can use this corner right here as my point to put my hole. So let's say I want to put a hole here and moving down to the circle command, circle by center point, I can go click on the end of that line and then I'm going to put an eighth inch hole right here and I can type my diameter in right over here as you can see hit enter and now I have an eighth inch hole there so the end drawing circles you right click and then you also have the ability to um, select out this rectangle and get rid of it and we need to get rid of this rectangle that we drew initially. A couple ways you can do it. You can hit your select. You can click and drag a box around it. That will select it. If I right click it unselects it. I can hit the uh, control button and start selecting lines. Okay. I can hit the shift button and then unselect lines. So what's important here is that you get the whole box selected and you don't allow these lines that are laying underneath this larger one to be there when you're finished because if you simply get rid of these I can cut them out here I wouldn't even notice these lines being here so now that we remove that a, a couple other things I just want to mention is um, if I click on that oops, so I get back to it and I'm able to draw it back. I have the ability to snap to that center again. Um, there's a couple other options I can do. If I hold down the right mouse button, this wheel comes up and it allows you to have shortcuts to what you want to do. As you can see, we have zoom options, pan options, we have uh, lines, circles, rectangles, arcs different options really handy for you selection so you can really um, quickly uh, change tools without always having to go back up here so um, just uh, important nice real nice little feature about solid edge um, so again I will select this out and then if I click on it I can cut. If I right click on it, I can cut. It gives me the ability to cut just like that. So, another little shortcut. Okay. So, now if I want to pan, I can click over here and then click and drag my object. Okay. So, moving on down, we've talked to. Uh, some about the rectangle. We're going to keep talking about the circle. Basically, you have circle options, and then you have ellipse options, um, and different methods to draw each one. You're going to want to practice and learn how all these work. Back up to the rectangle for a second. One thing I want to mention is this polygon by center. Um, so let's say um, 
you wanted to, here's a little handy little uh, tip if you wanted to build a, a bolt circle for instance this could be an easy way to do it let's say you have a bolt circle with uh, eight bolts and so what you can do is click on it and start drawing your different bolt holes and, and or your different spacing for a bolt hole and then you can select the corners and put holes where those corners are and you can make a match up and it's a nice easy way to make a bolt circle um, so but just something I wanted to mention so I'm gonna select all of these oh no I'm sorry I'm not gonna select all of these I'm gonna just drag a box around this and I'm gonna cut it out so now let's say for instance we wanted to put another um, matching hole in all four of these corners now there's a lot of little tricks and tips that you can learn to make drawing quicker we could do sorry about that we could do what we just did over here in all four corners or we have another option here up in your tools menu on this side you see mirror so it allows you to make a mirror image of whatever you want on the other side of a particular area so if I select the hole okay and then I go up to mirror okay now another thing you notice is you have prompts down here so we're going to find a point for the first point of the mirror line okay so to do that I'm going to want to go to the middle of this line right here so make sure it snaps to the middle and then if I draw down to the middle of this line make sure it snaps to the middle not on the line but to the middle All right, let's see right there so it's now snapped and to end doing this you right click so now you mirrored that hole right over there and you can do the same thing for these two holes so if I go and select uh, I gotta deselect this one I'm gonna hit control I don't want to select that so I just want those two holes selected go back and mirror it and I'm gonna set up my mirror line on the to be the center of these two lines and as you can see my holes are now mirrored and so I have my eighth inch holes spaced evenly in the corners of my plate now let's say for instance you wanted to build uh, put a circle in the center of this um, say for instance it was a motor mount um, so I go and I can to find the center okay I the easiest way is to simply draw a line okay you're gonna want to go to the middle snap to the middle of that one and then you're gonna snap to the middle of this one I'm gonna right click the stop drawing and now I can draw my circle by the center point based off the center of this line so I can snap to the center of that line and decide whatever size this hole needs to be so it's gonna be four inches Okay, I can right click the stop. I can then go back and select this line in the middle and I can cut it out. Okay, so those are some little tricks and tips. Next, we're going to be talking about arcs. So now we're going to talk a little bit about generating some arcs. So we have tangent arc by three points and arc by center point. The tangent arc and arc by three points are really similar. So just an example, click on that. It's going to prompt me down here for start. Click on the start point of the arc. Let's say I wanted that to be right there. And then it's going to pick on that, that one. And then it asked me for the end of the arc and now I got to pick a point on the arc okay so 
basically that could be anywhere I want basically so as an example now I'll click and undo that now if I go down to arc by center point it's going to ask me for the center point of my arc so that would be right here so I'm looking for the middle of my line and then it's going to ask me for a start point of the arc I click and then I can drag the arc however I want okay just show you over here center point of the arc end of the arc and then you can determine which way you want it to go okay so I'm sorry so I'm gonna undo that so now a good example of using arcs okay would be let's say we need an oblong hole that is um, say one inch by one inch long half inch wide so one way you could do this would be to go uh, this uh, create a rectangle first off that's gonna be a uh, half inch wide 0.5 in width and one inch in height okay and then you can go and select any of the methods of arc this way I'll use arc by center point and I'm gonna pick the center of this line and the end of this line and draw an arc and I'm gonna do the same thing down here the center of the line the end of the line sometimes it's a little tricky getting it to go the way you want sometimes you have to undo it and go the opposite direction there we go so with that selected I can then go back select that line right click cut it out select this line and then cut it out okay so there's an oblong hole it's one inch from here to here um, and it's a half inch wide so there's an uh, just an example so I'm gonna select that I'm gonna cut it out now moving on we have these options which are a fillet and a chamfer so your fillet will allow you to round corners so it's gonna say click on the first element down here it's asking you so if I click on this line click on second element this line and then I can determine the radius of my fillet so let's say I want an eighth inch radius it just rounded the corner okay so there's other ways you can do it you can also uh, click on first element click on second element um, you can change that radius if you want it's whatever you want so if I wanted to round these corners I would just keep doing this so now moving on to the chamfer option is slightly different so for this one we're gonna to have to have two separate lines so I'm gonna draw two lines here all right and uh, right like that perfect so now I'm going to go and select the chamfer so it's asking me to select the first line to chamfer be that one it's asking me for the second line that one and now I can start positioning where I want that chamfer to be all right and I have the ability to determine setbacks on both sides and the angle of the chamfer you know say I want to make it a, a 30 degree 
angle. You know, I, I can manipulate where I want it to be and what size I want it to be. Um, so, basically. So I'm going to go back to the 45 degree. And now I have the ability to set wherever I want that chamfer to be. Now, one interesting uh, thing about, let me undo that for a second. One interesting option in Solid Edge, a lot of times for a lot of tools, if you click and drag, I'm sorry. When you're, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me back up. I gotta be in the right tool. If I'm in the chamfer tool, I just erased my line by mistake. If I'm in the chamfer tool, all right, I can click and drag and set a chamfer automatically. So, and it's kind of basically determined on how, how I, as long as, and certain tools will allow you to do this click and drag option. Trim is one of them and we'll talk about that. It's kind of a, a real quick and dirty way to make a chamfer on the edge if you're not really concerned about precise measurements. So that's your chamfer tool. Now, what I mentioned before was the trim. It allows you to trim objects and um, uh, basically cut away parts of them. Okay, so let me here select this option. And so another example is we were doing, um, say, an oblong hole, okay? That oblong hole is going to be a diameter of two inches. And from center point to center point, I want it to be, let's say, one and a half inches. So let's just, to do this, what I can do is I can draw from the center point of this two inch circle an inch and a half line. So I can type in 1.5. So now my line is inch and a half. I can right click the stop drawing. I can then go back and draw a second circle. Okay, that's going to be two inches here. So now to make this an oblong hole, I can then select, as you can see, I'm snapping to the quadrant of this circle. And I can snap to the quadrant of this circle. Right click the stop drawing. Again, snap to the quadrant of this circle. And draw another line. Then right click the stop. So now, if I get rid of all this stuff in here, I'll have an oblong hole, my correct dimensions. To do that, we'll use the trim option. So in here, I can start clicking and selecting different options. Now I can also drag, click and drag across different things and it will make them disappear. And so now we have an oblong hole. So now um, I'm going to simply select this out here for just a second. Get rid of this. All right, I'm going to go cut. And so moving on, I'm going to talk about just briefly this trim corner, or, or I'm sorry, trim or extend corner. Um, basically, if we have two lines drawn that are separate, and we go into this mode, it asks us to select the first line, and then the second line, it will extend the corner for us basically very simply so if I select undo I'm going to undo that last line draw another line so not only do I have the ability to draw lines but I also if you notice have the ability to select the angle that I want it to be so I can be 45 negative 45 I can, it's an easy way to simply draw. So if I go back over here, extend corner, first object, 
second object extends the corner for me. It doesn't have to be a 90 degree. It could be any corner you want. Okay. So, um, that is your extend corner. Now I'm going to go back to select, box this, and cut it out. So now this split will split an element at a specified point. So let's just say, for instance, we want to, I'm going to select that that and so now this element is no longer just one circle it's two halves of a circle okay I can do the same thing over here I'm going to split this and I'm going to split it right at the center. So now I have two lines instead of one. Same thing over here. I'm going to split this two lines instead of one. Okay. So now I have the ability to select half of that object. Okay. So let's say I wanted to make this instead of one object, I need to have two halves here. Okay. So now I can simply go into the move option. So I'm going to click on a point to move from and a point to move to. And so now I've split my object into two. If I wanted to button it up, I can simply draw lines to connect. And now I do halves of my original object. So now um, I'm going to talk briefly about this offset tool. Um, it allows you to select a object or a closed object and then offset it um, however far you want. So basically I decide um, what I want to offset and the distance I want to offset it. Okay, so if I wanted to offset a half inch that would offset it. So it's taking the object and basically moving it out. And you can continue to offset it. And uh, it's a nice way to duplicate um, an image and increase or decrease its size ever so slightly. So, um, it's kind of a useful tool. So I'm going to undo these real quick. Oops. All right. Then we're going to move down here. We've already showed you the move option. It allows you to click and move an object. This is your rotate option. So if I select that option, I can click on the center of the rotation wherever I want that center to be. And then I can click on where, where I want to rotate it. So if I want to rotate it 90 degrees, I'll use the snaps to allow me to do that. So I click on the center. And then if I click up here, it's showing me I'm vertical. And then I can move it until it snaps till I'm horizontal. And now I've moved my object. So it does duplicate it when it does that. Um, so you may want to remove the original and get rid of it. So let me undo that. So that's your rotate. And then here's your scale. Um, this is a pretty important one. It allows you to scale an object. Now, just as an example, I'm going to select all this out, get rid of it. So with that gone, we're going to start talking real quickly about the scale option. And a common example is uh, it's really easy to find DXF files of art 
um, that people uh, either on websites like Plasma Spider that basically give it away or a lot of other companies will sell you different options and often a DXF file is one of the the main formats it comes in. Now to be able to manipulate and um, scale and edit a DXF you're going to need a 2D drawing soft or drafting software like this. So just an example I'm going to open up a DXF file that came from a and we're going to show you how to scale it. So here we have a little cowboy. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is um, make sure that my uh, file properties are still right. Inches, okay. Make sure it didn't change anything. And then I'll, I'm gonna adjust my grid options back to where I was. So, and then I'm gonna adjust my minimum lines. So as you can see, he's pretty small. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to make him a foot tall rather than right now he's uh, roughly one two, three, like eight or so inches tall so first off I'm gonna select him all right and I'm gonna move him I'm gonna pick a point down here on the bottom okay and then I'm gonna move him down to the bottom here so I know he's anchored on that bottom axis okay so then what I can do is go into my scale option all right and so you're gonna pick on pick the center point for the scale basically where you want the scale to start so I'm just gonna pick right here and then we can then start scaling him up till he reaches about a foot tall and uh, basically it's that simple you know if you're concerned about a particular size you know you can draw a bounding box around him and let's say let's say you you were wanting to cut this out on a sheet of steel and you wanted to set it up to make sure that you had the right size so if I made this say I had a 24 by a 24 inch plate of steel and I wanted to cut a bunch of him out I mean you can simply select him and then you can copy him and paste him and then go and, and move it move him wherever you want you could rotate him you could flip him it allows you to align him on this plate and fill your plate up and then when you want to cut them out send it to sheet cam you'll simply get rid of your bounding box and then you know you're ready to go so so we have two scaled cowboys here and of course the last stomp the step with any of this whether you're drawing mechanical parts scaling art parts is you're going to go up to your application and save as and you're going to save it as a DXF file okay so I'm going to save to my desktop test cut now normally I'd be taking this that DXF file put it on a thumb drive and take it over to my machine but I'm just going to show you go down import drawing test cuts right there it was done in inches and so there's the two cowboys ready to cut out so those are really a lot of the basic tools in drawing and really that's going to where our tutorial is going to end um, I'm going to encourage you to uh, play with all these other tools, these relational tools, um, dimensioning, and this annotation is mainly for drawing up uh, mechanical drawings. 
um, but you also have text options. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was this block option. Now, sometimes you'll get an object, okay, that is joined or not joined into a block. And it'll be important for you to be able to manipulate it the way you want it. Like, say, for instance, if this guy... So, let's say... I can't just select part of this line here, okay? In order to manipulate or cut out part of this line, I first have to break it apart. And that is done by doing an ungroup. So I select the line and then I ungroup. And so now I have the, if I zoom in real closely, I have the ability to select parts of this line. So let's say I wanted to eliminate his feet. And I wanted to put a box down here. Or if I had a, a welcome sign that I wanted to attach him to, I could do that. You know, um, let's just, just as an example, let's say I wanted to do a light switch cover with a cowboy on the top. And I knew that my light switch cover had to be a particular size all right so let's say it was i'm not sure what it's going to be but it's not going to be say a six inch by five inch box okay just as a as an example all right so now i can select my cowboy and i can move him down onto that line. All right, so now he's attached right there and there. So now um, to actually join the two objects, I can simply go over here to select, select this bottom part, cut it out. And cut it out. Cut it out. So then I'm going to join, draw a little joining line from the very end of that onto that line. Then I'm going to stop, do the same thing from the end of this line onto this line. It could be there, there. It's showing an intersection there. So there we go. And so now go back, select that, and we can use the trim option. Well, I'm not going to use the trim option. I'm just going to cut that line out completely. And then draw in some additional lines here. Oh, trouble snapping to this spot. There we go. So now my cowboy has been joined with my uh, light switch plate. Let's say I'm going to have to draw my little light switch in the middle of it. I can draw a rectangle by the center. And let's just say that's my mark for my switch. Now it could be a lot smaller than that. And then I can put my screw holes in there and get them precisely aligned the way I want. Allows you to join up Let me cut him out. Uh, an artistic image with a CAD drawn image. And that's going to be a really big key for you if you want to take, because I this could have been a black and white image that I drew myself, vectorized in Inkscape scaled it to the right size, I could bring it into solid edge and then attach it to a precisely drawn part. This could be example would be uh, the light switch, it could be a bracket for a, a shelf. Um, you're not going to be able to position holes precisely for elements like that in a drawing software. You're going to need a CAD software. And so 
the big challenge is how do you get the two to mix together and so this is basically how we do it now one last thing I want to mention is in order for this to all get joined together properly we have to make sure it's all in the same layer right now if you look over here on the layer we have multiple layers over here so in order to do that you're gonna select the entire thing okay then you're gonna go move elements and I'm gonna move everything to the default layer click OK so now everything's over on one layer and if I select it all again now when I do a group it joins everything together okay so now when I export this it will be one object in sheet cam so as you can see now I've opened up in sheet cam and we have one solid object you open it up and you see that these lines are white then that's showing you don't have a closed object that these lines have not been joined properly okay so that's a really important um, point is to make sure everything is on the same uh, layer so as you can see we have one layer here okay so that everyone everything imports in sheet camp correctly so moving back over to solid edge that's some of the basics and that's really where this tutorial is going to end um, I really encourage you to get to know this program it's a great program and it really can do a lot for you thanks for watching and um, that's it for this uh, solid edge 2d drafting tutorial